Hey everyone. In today's video, I'm going to be covering all the changes that we've made in the new DAS to Blender update. To start things off, I'm going to load a Genesis 8.1 male into the scene, some basic hair and clothing. I'm also going to load one of our basic poses onto this figure because you can now export posed figures with our bridges. Another new feature that we've added is you can now bake in clothing morphs, meaning that any morphs applied in Daz Studio will now apply at export. You may notice that the shorts are a little scrunched up at the waist. So if we select the shorts and then adjust them under the shapings tab, those clothing morphs will now bake in at export. Now that our scene is ready to send to Blender, we can navigate up to scripts and go to Daz to Blender. You may notice that my script is a little different, minus for the beta version. When the Blender Bridge settings window pops up, we're gonna wanna uncheck include animation data, and then we're gonna wanna make sure we check include morphs and click accept. This window is another one of our new features with this bridge update and will contain all of the morphs in the scene. What users do in this window will largely depend on what you want to do with uh, your scene file in Blender. For example, if, if we go here, we can click on Genesis 8.1 mail, and in this middle column, we can access all of the morphs attached to the figure. Or I can also go through the morph groups, and for example, if I want the pose controls, I can click the head and the expressions, and I can see all of the expressions in this morph group here, in the second column. You can shift click, you can control A, or you can click them individually. Just be sure to click the button at the bottom to add them to the export. One handy tool that this morph tree has that I'd like to highlight quickly is the ability to filter morphs. For example, if we go back into the morph groups and select the Genesis 8.1 male again, so that we're viewing all of the morphs in the scene, and then navigate back to the second column to the search bar at the top. For this scene, I'm gonna search for the base joint correctives. You can see all I have to type in is BAS and it'll automatically pull it up. And instead of selecting add to export, I'm actually going to click add connected morphs at the bottom of the left hand column. And the script is smart enough to grab all of the morphs connected with it as well. And I actually don't want the base joint correctives morph. So I'm actually going to select this in the third column in morphs in export. And I'm going to click remove from export. And now I should be ready to export. Before I do that though, it's important to note while the script will keep the settings that you used in your last export, if you think you'll be grabbing a lot of the same morphs, you can just save a preset and then load that in from the window when the script launches. To do that, we're just gonna go up to the top left hand corner of the window and click save preset. And then I'm just gonna save this something simple. Uh, I'm gonna name it base morphs and click save. And then to show you that they all saved, I'm gonna come over here to Morphs and Export. I'm gonna click Control A to select them all. I'm gonna remove them, and then I'm gonna load in the preset. And you can see that this preset loaded in all of those morphs again. Another change in this update is the file location where this figure is gonna be exported to on your machine. So I'm gonna show you that really quick as well. Daz is gonna be exporting these files, and Blender is gonna be looking for them on your machine under Documents, Daz 3D, Bridges, Daz the Blender. And I'm gonna show you that now. Just double check and make sure that all the files are there and that they're all correct. On the Blender side, we're gonna activate the script by going up to Edit, Preferences, and then search for Daz in this search bar here. And be sure to click that box to enable the plugin. And then before exiting out of this window here, make sure to go to Save and Load. And then click this box here for Auto Run Python Scripts. Now you're free to close out of this window. And then click this arrow here and open up the Daz to Blender script. The first thing that you'll notice is that with this new update comes a new UI controller for this bridge. In addition to the previous controls to import figures and environments and to toggle IK controls, you may notice the additional controls to import poses and add poses to the pose library, as well as a list of the morphs that we exported from Daz Studio, along with slider controls for those morphs. Before we talk about these new features in greater depth though, we're gonna make sure the materials came over correctly first. I'm gonna switch the render engine to Eevee, and then I'm gonna turn on our render preview. Now that we've made sure everything looks okay, we're gonna move on over to our morph list. One of the most exciting new features about this bridge update is that morphs are now dependently driven by each other, a lot like in Daz Studio. 
Meaning that if, for example, we go on our morph list to the surprised morph and adjust this slider here, you can see that the eyelashes were controlled as well by this morph driver. This helps bring over a lot more potential from Daz to the Blender side for animation purposes. You can also toggle on and off which drivers are affecting which morphs. For example, if we adjust the shock morph and then turn on the object mode, you can see when I navigate here under shape keys and toggle these checkboxes that it'll actually turn on and off which morphs are currently being driven. The benefit of this is that you can make adjustments in real time that look realistic to what your figure is capable of. At the time of this recording, the Ben JCM morphs aren't currently driven automatically, but since the morphs were exported with the figure, you still can affect them. You just have to be in pose mode and then turn on the IK bones and then select them in the scene and manually position them. And you can still animate them manually that way. Another new feature from this bridge update that I want to touch on is that you can import poses from your content library from Daz Studio in Blender using this UI. And to do that, all you have to do is click Import Pose and navigate to where you have these files installed to on your computer in this pop-up window here. Now, this file location will probably be different for most users, so I'm going to show you how to find where this is installed to on your computer now. For this, we're going to be going back to Daz Studio, and we're going to be going to our content library pane, Daz Studio Formats, my Daz 3D library, and we're gonna right click on that and select browse to folder location. In the window that pops up, just copy the folder location and then let's go back to Blender. Back on the Blender side, under this Blender file view window again, you can just paste that folder path location at the top window here. And in this instance, I'm gonna navigate to Genesis 8 Mail and poses. For the sake of keeping this simple, I'm just going to be looking under my base poses. Now that we're looking in a folder with some pose files, we can start selecting them individually to load into Blender. And you can import as many poses as you want. Once we've got some poses into Blender, we can select our figure and then look under our pose library and toggle between each of our poses that we've saved under this pose library here. Now that we've brought over a couple different poses, we can combine that with our morphs that we've brought over, and we can finish things off by adding some frames and combining everything together to do some animations as well. I'm gonna showcase that now just to end things off with a brief uh, proof of concept. So to do that, I'm gonna add uh, 15 frames really quickly to the timeline. And then under the morph list, let's um, let's go back to the shocked morph and then add a value here. And then let's also add a value to surprised as well. The animation will call on both of these morphs and combine them throughout the playback. And then if we want to make this animate faster, we can go to playback. Um, sync and then uh, change this to frame dropping. And now it's a little easier to see that while these two morphs are being combined for this animation process, different parts of the face are being affected. You know, we can see that the eyelashes, the eyebrows, the jaw, the mouth, all of them are, are being driven by these morphs. And there's really no limit to how many morphs or poses you can use during this uh, animation. And previously, you could only you, you could only do this exclusively in the object mode. Now, with this bridge update, you, you don't have to be. So that pretty much does it. That's that's everything I wanted to show you guys in this video today. So take care.